Hey, welcome back. No, this is not public Wi-Fi security number five. That will be the last video in that series and that'll be coming this weekend. Just because it takes a little bit more time to set that up. That is going to be a longer video, so I'm going to do that one during the weekend. Um, what this video is going to be about is uh, obviously Edge Max, Edge OS, and I'm going to show you how to assign multiple uh, WAN IPs to your WAN interface. So somebody suggested this. I've got some other Edge Router videos coming out. I'll have another one probably Friday. I'm pretty excited about that. But uh, you remember this, uh, this Edge Router we turned into a switch in public Wi-Fi security number four. So we're going to go ahead and log into this guy. We're going to hop over to the wizard. We're going to do WAN plus 2LAN2. Um, our internet is going to be ETH0. And we are going to pretend that our service provider has given us a block of IPs. Now, this could be five usable. In several cases, when I sign up for internet, uh, I will request class C's depending on the need. I've only been issued three of those. Um, because I've only asked for them three times, but generally if, if you can justify the IP usage, they will give you the IPs. Now everybody's like, oh, we're out of IP version 4 addresses. Well, they've all been claimed, but that doesn't mean that the service providers have handed them all out. And that also doesn't mean um, that people aren't moving to IP version 6, so some of those IP version 4s are, are coming back into circulation. We should be looking at IP version 6, um, and we'll do some... Edge Max, Edge OS, IP version 6 videos here in the near future. Um, I just want to let you know, I'm in about the last week of my study for the VMware Certified Professional 6, and that's taking up a couple of hours a night, plus I have all the family stuff, plus uh, the consulting I do on the side, and my normal job that I'm, you know, 45 to 50 hours a week with that. So I, I stay pretty busy, but once I get past this VCP 6, uh, the videos will start becoming more regular, probably back to one a day. But I am studying quite a bit right now. So um, let's get back to the Edge Router here. And we're going to pretend that our service provider gave us, let's just work on a Class C. So that's a subnet mask of 255.255.255.0. So it's 254 usable IP addresses for our uh, argument here. So what we're going to do is we're going to say that our internet is going to be ETH0, it's going to be a static IP, and a service provider normally would give you actual live routable IPs. I don't have this guy plugged into the rest of the lab right now, so we're going to pretend that our service provider has given us the 192.168.1.0 slash 24, but we're going to put um, 192.168.1.1. Um, on this guy. You know what? Actually, we'll put, let's do this. We'll put 1.2 on here. 255, 255, 255, uh, 0, and then we'll make the gateway 192, 168, 1.1. And then when we plug this into the lab in a video early next week, then uh, it'll be a little simple. Um, so let's see. Uh, we'll put uh, DNS to one or eight dot eight dot eight dot eight, which is Google's DNS. We will leave the default firewall the way it is, and this is an Edge Router X. So we will use um, the built-in switch, and I'm going to change the internal address on this to ten dot ten dot. 10.1, and we'll leave that at a class C. We will leave the, the default UBNT, UBNT. Do not use that username and password in production. Please do not use that in production. So, all right, the address on our WANs, 192.168.1.2 with a gateway of 1.1. That all looks good, so we'll go ahead and apply this. And we'll apply the changes and we'll reboot. Yes, for sure. So we're going to take 
our edge router, we're going to take the cable out of ETH0. So if you remember when you get this guy um, and he comes right out of the box, you have to have a 192.168.1. 1 something in that class C to access this. Now, it just so happens that I plugged into that port because remember we weren't tagging any traffic on there. So now that this is rebooting and it's going to start handing out IPs, we will take the cable out of there and we will plug it into um, ETH1, out of ETH0 into ETH1 because ETH1 is now in our switch. It'll be handing out those 10 dot addresses. We will pull up our network preferences and we will put it back on DHCP now as soon as the router has finished booting this guy should pick up an address mm -hmm -hmm. There it goes. I was just getting ready to switch ports and see what happens. So that default DHCP range is picking up. So what we're going to do now is we're going to load our router on 10.10.10.1. You probably can't see that. I'm working with a different screen resolution tonight, but there it is. So we're going to log in. And so let's say that... Um, and this is pretty common. So let's say that you're doing some things with your bank and you're sending files to your bank and something that's really popular um, with banking and, and uh, people, uh, businesses, there's a thing called POSPAY. And what it is is a file that's generated by your check writing software and you transmit it to the bank. And then when the checks start clearing, it's, it's kind of a fraud prevention measure that's built in. So the the bank receives the file of all the checks that you've actually issued. So then if they get a check that's not in those files, it's called an exception. And then they contact somebody on site and they're like, oh, hey, uh, you know, John Smith wrote this $100,000 check or presented this $100,000 check, but it wasn't in the file. And you can either approve the exception or then you've caught somebody with fraud potentially. So um, a lot of times when the bank, uh, when you're dealing with the bank, they want to see that file come from a certain IP address. So to do that with an edge router, you could either use the default IP of, of the WAN interface, which is going to have all the traffic behind it masqueraded by default when you run through that wizard, or if you like to have different IP addresses mean different things, because, um, I mean, we can get into all kinds of things like reverse DNS, and, and I mean, sometimes it's just easier. Like, let's say that you have a couple of different servers that send those files to the bank. You might decide that you want the bank to see not your WAN interface, but a different IP for control purposes. Your auditor's probably gonna like that too. So in our case, uh, what we, the first thing we need to do before you can do the SNAT, the, the source NAT, which is what that would be, um, and I do have an, uh, an SNAT, source NAT video. It will probably get redone here on the heels of this since you can see me and, and hear me, um, but Right now, what we're worried about is how do we get those other static IP addresses on the WAN interface? And so not only, you know, SNAT, but then you can also do DNAT or um, I guess you, I wouldn't use port forwarding, but you could do DNAT with this and have different IPs do, do different things. So uh, the first thing, and it's probably oversimplifying it. So if you're watching this video down in the comments, Put some other usage scenarios in there that I didn't cover, you know, so let's let's all kind of talk about that a little bit. And the first thing we're going to do is we are going to bring up our internet connection, with this, which is ETH0, and we're going to go to config. And when you see this, you're going to be like, you spent 10 minutes talking and this is what this was? Yeah, <laughs> this is, it's pretty easy. So uh, we have the description here is internet. We have our address is manually defined. There's this button right here that says add IP. And you can do this for any, any interface, by the way. This just happens to be our WAN interface. 
I'm going to click Add IP. I'm going to select Manually Define. And now I'm going to put in 192.168.1.3 slash 24. I can even do, I can do multiple IPs. Now, just because my service provider is giving me a whole class C, maybe I'm not using them right now. I don't have to bind them to the interface, but I'm going to go ahead and save this. It's saved, and now you're going to see right here where we have, have bound 1.2, 1 1.3, 1 and 1.4. Uh, but So the short and long of it is now those are attached. Now I can do DNAT, SNAT, all kinds of nifty things with those. So if you like the video, give me a thumbs up. Let me know this is helpful. Please subscribe. Please comment and share, and I will see you at the next video.